By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another nice game of Magic the Gathering for you old school, of course. I am playing against Rickard. He is one of my patrons and he is bringing, I've called it mana plants. He bring a red and a blue deck to the table with some black splash. And there, there are a lot of tricks in that deck that revolve around his playset of mana shorts that he plays in that deck. And I'm battling against him with a new brew. It's Candle Flare, so I'm playing with my two Candelabras of Taunus in this deck and with Mana Flare. Now, before I start with the deck deck, I've got deck pictures of both of these decks. I would just like to point out that, as always, there are timestamps in the description below. There you can also find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the action. So I know that some of you prefer to first watch the match and do the deck tech later or some just want to skip the deck deck altogether. So that's all cool, that's all fine. You can find the information to that below. There you can also find information about rule sets, um, you know, any other info is shared over there if need be. Okay, so uh, this is it. This is the game we're going to look at. And uh, I'm now going to continue with the deck decks. I'm actually going to start with the deck of my opponent today with Rickard's Mana Plants. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of my opponent today, Rickard, and um, it is interesting because he's playing with four of, well, actually one of my favorite cards. I guess I have too many favorite cards, right? I'm calling all these weird cards my favorite cards, but uh, let's just dive into the card, shall we? Um, mana short, mana short, one blue and two to cast for an instant. All opponent's lands are tapped and opponent's mana pool is emptied. Opponent takes no damage from unspent mana, which is of course relevant if you play uh, a rule set with mana burn. Now, um, mana short is also nicknamed the poor man's uh, time walk, right? Because basically what you do, you play this during the upkeep of your opponent, all his lands tap, and then you're kind of assuming, okay, he cannot use his lands for mana, so he probably is unable to cast anything and he'll definitely have to just pass turn and give me my turn. Now, this is exactly where kind of the, the thinking goes um, how do you say that goes wrong? Like it, it's not correct anymore because the problem of course with mana short is it only taps the lands. And um, you're in old school and in magic in general, but especially old school, there are a lot of mana dorks and there are a lot of artifact mana rocks as you call them. So you've got the Moxen that are very well known, of course, you've got the Lotus, but you also have Felwer Stone, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, there are a lot of ways to get mana outside of your lands. And then, of course, the mana dorks, Birds of Paradise, Llanowar Elves, uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. You know, there are a couple of ways, especially in green, but there are other ways. Even Apprentice Wizard could be a weird one on this list, but there are a lot of ways of getting mana, even if you don't have any lands. And that is probably why you don't see mana short that often being played in old school magic, because there are just too many ways to kind of work around it. Now, that being said, having no lands at your disposal, you know, for your mana is, of course, a problem. When you're constructing a deck, you don't think, oh, I'm probably going to face four mana short, so I've got to work around the mana short. No. So I think the fact that a mana short doesn't see a lot of play actually makes it a better card because you don't take that into account when you're constructing a deck. Now, if we look at Rickard's deck and we say, okay, what does he want to do with the mana short? Well, one of the main things that I can see here is he's playing with Psychic Venom. Now, Psychic Venom is another card that I've actually tested a little bit in a blue aggro builds because Psychic Venom is one blue and one to cast for an enchant land. Look at that art. It's fant fantastic. If you own this black border, by the way, it's even more stunning. Um, this, it, it reads, whenever target land is tapped, Psychic Venom does two damage to the target land's controller. Now, maybe you're familiar with a little card we call City of Brass that sees a lot of play in old school. Play Psychic Venom on a City of Brass. Next turn, play Mana Short, and your opponent gets three damage just for tapping the City of Brass. I mean, it's it's a lot of pain. And I think Psychic Venom, also in combination with the IC Manipulators in this deck, can do a lot of work. Now, just besides that obvious synergy in the deck of Rickard, I think his Mana Shorts also kind of have to function to simply just to buy him time, to just give your opponent... Not a lot of opportunities to do anything. He's also playing with, for example, three Hypnotic Spectres. Now, the thing with an Hypnotic Spectre is as soon as it's on the board, you have to find an answer. But the Mana Short can kind of uh, um, prevent your opponent from, from being able to play that answer. That being said, obvious answers are usually instant spells like Lightning Bolt, uh, Swords to Plowshares. So maybe that doesn't work. But on the other hand, in a lot of cases, 
it probably will work. Why not? And I think that's kind of what I like about the strategy here in Rickard's deck. He isn't going 100% on Mana Short. He's saying Mana Short by itself, it's a pretty decent card. It's going to give me some time. And, you know, I'm playing with some pretty powerful stuff here. Uh, you know, he's got Brain Geyser. He's got um, his Jam Day Tomes. He's got some good creatures. He's got some Ices. So he's thinking, you know, if I can just kind of make sure that my opponent doesn't have very efficient turns, then I can use my very powerful spells on my strong creatures to deal more damage. Also remember, um, he's playing with four counter spells, for example. So he can have a turn where he, and he plays a mana short and then with the mana that's left, I'm trying to do something, but he can counter that away with his counter spell. That would be kind of ideal. And at the same time, kind of having somewhat of a board presence, he's also playing with three control magics, which is interesting. So if his opponent is able to cast a creature, he can actually just steal it with the control magic. What I like about decks that, you know, um, decks like this is that they don't rely too heavily on counter magic. Yes, he's playing with five counter spells, but for example, he's got answers to creatures. He doesn't need to counter creatures per se. So he can focus uh, to use his counter spells, for example, to protect his own creatures or to take care of, let me, you know, to take care of the really powerful spells like getting a time walk against you or ancestral recall or maybe a huge fireball. I don't want to say too much about my deck, but that would be a good choice for, for Rickard here. Um, so that's kind of what I always like when you see N3 ICs, N3 control magics, is you have options. If you're unable to counter a big creature, it is really not a big deal. Do you get it? Big creature, big deal. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Rickard. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. I think it's uh, it's really nice and refreshing uh, to see a deck with four mana shorts and with four Psychic Venom, so I'm excited to see that, and I'm looking forward to play against this. Now let's take a look at my deck, Candle Flare. And here we see the deck that I am playing with today, and it's called Candle Flare, and I'm actually very excited to play with this deck because it is a new build for me. Obviously, the whole Candle Flare concept is one of the oldest kind of old school little deck tricks uh, that we see, so there's nothing new there. But for me, it's a whole new experience, and of course, I try to put some of my favorite cards in this Candle Flare build because I, I always want to do like fun stuff, right? So. We've got Mana Flare. Let's just start with the basics of the deck. So for the people that don't know, Mana Flare is an enchantment for one red and two. And uh, it reads, whenever either player taps a land for mana, it produces one extra mana of the appropriate type, right? So if I have one mountain, I can tap it for one red, but it's now going to give me two red instead of one red. Simple, right? Now, this is how it works with Candelabra of Taunus. Candelabra of Taunus, beautiful artifact from Antiquities for one to cast, Mono artifact, meaning I have to tap it, X and tap, untap X separate lands. So, for example, if I have my Mana Flare on the board and I've got four mountains, I can tap my four mountains, but they're going to give me double mana. So I'm not having eight red to spend, right? Then I can put four of those red mana into my Candelabra of Taunus, tap my Candelabra of Taunus to untap my mountains, and then I can generate even more land. I can tap it again. So basically what Candelabra of Tannis and Mana Flare does, it gives you tons and tons of mana, right? This is important to remember, tons and tons of mana. It's not that complicated. So then the next question is, if you've got tons and tons of mana, what are you going to do with it? Well, the obvious option is, of course, I'm going to build a huge fireball or a disintegrate and I'm going to kill my opponent. Now, as you can see, that is in this deck. I'm playing two fireballs and two disintegrates. I'm playing earthquakes on the sideboard, by the way. Uh, not main because I'm also playing some ground creatures. Maybe you're wondering why, but I really like to play with these ground creatures, but I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. So there are a lot of X spells. There are a lot of mana sinks, right? So you can you can win the game with a huge disintegrate or a huge fireball. For me, that's kind of my B plan. Sometimes a B plan will become an A plan, but of course I'm hoping to win with Sheevan Dragon, Dragon Whelp, or even better, a Dragon Engine. Now, Dragon Engine is three to cast. It's a 1-3 creature from the Antiquities. It plays a huge role in the lore of the Brothers' War, and uh, that's also one of the reasons why I like it so much. And uh, it's not very good. I'm just going to be honest, it's not very good. It's 1-3, meaning you can still bolt it. It's an artifact, meaning there are tons of ways to get rid of it. It's also a creature. There are even more ways to get rid of it, right? So it's a very vulnerable little piece of magic engineering. But I love it. I like the purple background. I like the lore. I, I, I kind of like the goofy art. 
I like the fact it's called a dragon engine, but it's not really powerful. I also understand why it's called a dragon engine, because when you pay two colorless mana, it gets plus one, plus oh, right? So if I have candle, uh, candelabra of Tannis and mana flare on the board and a dragon engine, I can generate tons and tons of mana, and then I can make a really big dragon engine and I can attack with my engine chook chook and I can attack. Um, that's kind of the dream of my deck. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Maybe not, but I've got a few pretty solid backup plans. I mean, this is not like a fun deck. There are some serious elements to this deck as well. I'm playing with two Sheevan Dragons, as you can see, the 5-5 five, five Powerhouse, with, of course, that Fire Breathing ability, one red plus one plus O, oh, so it's also a great mana sink. And, of course, I've got Dragon Whelp. Now, Dragon Whelp, it's quite an interesting little flyer. It's two red and two to cast for a 2-3 flyer, and it doesn't see a lot of play because the casting cost is kind of high. Four mana for a 2-3 flyer. But what I like about it is um, you can pump three red into it, making it into a 5-3, so it can deal five damage. You know, kind of the juggernaut stats, but then flying. Um, and the other thing that you can do is kind of like a bomber, right? I can choose to add even more red mana into it. If I go over the three red mana, it, it destroys itself at the end of the turn. But who cares if I can kill my opponent before I even reach my end step, right? So with my Candelabra of Tannis and my Mana Flare, I will have tons and tons of mana. I can attack with a huge Dragon Whelp. I can maybe deal 10, maybe deal 20 damage in one go and kill my opponent. So that's what I'm really kind of hoping for. So or a win by Dragon Engine or a win by Dragon Whelp and kind of having my burn spells on the side. Now I'm also playing with two kind of maybe oddball creatures in this deck there in, in the left bottom corner, Orcish Mechanics. I was kind of doubting between Dwarven Warriors or Orcish Mechanics. I'm not sure what I'm going to choose for. Now the Orcish Mechanics is just another way to deal the last points of damage if I can't get through for whatever reason. Now Orcish Mechanics is a creature from the Antiquities, a 1-1. One, one. I believe it's four to cast, one red and three, so that's pretty steep. Um, and I can tap it and then it reads, sacrifice an artifact to deal two damage to any target. So for example, if I've got a tap Mana Vault that I cannot untap for whatever reason, it's a great target. For, uh, for my Orcish Mechanics, I can just step my Orcish Mechanics and I can throw that Mana Vault to the face of my opponent or even kill a smaller creature that maybe he has on the board, right? So that's something I can do with it. Um, another card I'd like to point out here is Detonate. It's just another X spell, one red and X, and it destroys an artifact. And the X, you've got to pay the casting cost for the artifact. So for example, my opponent today, Rickard, is playing with Jam Day Tomes. If I want to destroy that, I need one red and four. The cool thing is with Detonate, then it also deal four damage to, to him. So there's a lot of kind of direct damage in this deck. Um, one last card that I would like to point out is um, the Forks. There are two Forks in here, two red to cast, and um, you can copy any instant or interrupt um, or sorcery. So I'm looking forward to kind of copying a counterspell of my opponent and countering his counterspell with the copied counterspell, if you can still follow what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the deck. I'm really looking forward to, to try it out. It's my first time swinging a candle flare brew, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So let's go to the games. And here we go, game number one. Ricker sitting on the left with the Icy Manipulator playmat. It looks like he's on the play. I'm sitting on the right, and that's a beautiful Mishra's Factory Winter Edition. Oh, look at that. Very modern, Ricker, changing your light with your app. But this is much better, not so much glare. And he's passing turn here. Playing a basic mountain and passing. There is an underground sea. And Psychic Venom, okay. So that's going to be annoying, like an early Psychic Venom. I wonder how much damage that's going to do this turn. It's Psychic Venom or just this, this first game, I mean. Psychic Venom is really a card I'm going to keep an eye on. I just think it's it's interesting. It seems to have potential. I mean, two dam damage anytime you just tap your land. That's pretty painful. And if you're Ricker, this is exactly what you want to do. You want to play those Psychic Venoms early in the game. The later you play them, the less value they have. And of course, those mana shorts that he plays with help him to actually get value in, in the late game from them as well. Now there is a third mountain. Will I be able to play something? Deciding not to, maybe I don't want to take two damage, but I probably just have nothing to play. A mana vault would have been nice, right? A mana vault and then a turn three chief and dragon. That's one of the scenarios I'm hoping for, but it's not happening here. Mana short 
Wow, so this is kind of just giving my turn away here. This is that kind of budget time walk we talked about that field. This is exactly what mana short can do. Um, yeah, just playing a basic mountain and I just have to pass turn here. Cannot find a Candelabra of Tannis or a Mana Volt or any other one drop. Also playing a Soul Ring, of course. But this is just giving Rickard time, you know. And that's great for him. It looks like he's missed a land drop, by the way. And this makes it kind of difficult for me as well, because are you going to play a Mana Flare if you know that your opponent's kind of low on lands? Playing land number 5 myself, so drawing into a lot of lands, it seems. Which is not a bad thing for my deck. But I'm hoping to find a follow-up. Dragonwell pro may be next turn. That would be kind of ideal if, of course, Rickard cannot play another mana short. It looks like he can. So I'm going into my main phase, finally having some untapped lands. Hopefully I can cast something. I have enough mana for a Sheevan Dragon. Instead, an Orcish Mechanics. That's not great. That is not great. I believe I was just discussing the card with Rickard. I think he asked, what what does it do? And I think that's a good sign because maybe, yeah, so he's kind of like scared for it. He's going to counter it. I think this is a really good scenario for me because Orcish Mechanics just doesn't do much at the moment. So he's going to get three extra mana from the mana drain so he can play something big. Um, Brain Geyser would be kind of ideal for him right now or just, or just a creature. I mean, a creature could get me into trouble like an Hypnotic Spectre, for example. Ooh, tapping everything. Are we going to see... Oh, we're going to see a Suja, but he's got the three mana, right? So he actually only has to tap one. Interesting. And there is the mana flare. And tapping eight. What am I going to do here? Going to go down to 14. Oh, Rock Hydra. That is cool. Rock Hydra. 6-6. Six, six. Oh, you gotta love that. And by the way, Psychic Venom is dealing damage to me again. So it now dealt six damage, just that one Psychic Venom. So please make note, this card is pretty powerful. So I've now got a 6-6 six, six Rock Hydra that I didn't even discuss in my deck deck. It's such a cool card. Two red and X. And for each X that you pump into it, it's gonna get an extra head. So a plus one, plus one counter. So it's now a 6-6. Six, six. And you can actually grow heads as well. It's pretty sweet. Oh, there's Control Magic. I think I kind of have to point out for Rickard there that there is a Mana Flare on the table. Okay, that's what I'm doing right now. So he only has to tap two mana. Tapping Underground Sea and a Swamp. Oh, man, this is so painful. I think this is going to give him the victory. He just stole my 6-6 six -six playing a GM Dayton, which is great because, you know, for two mana I could draw a card because of Mana Flare. But... I mean, I'm looking at 10 damage. I'm actually on 10. I need to do something really, really quickly. Maybe a detonate? Lightning Bolt? Okay, yeah, Lightning Bolt, because then I take off the heads. The way Rock Hydra works, and another Lightning Bolt. Okay, so it is a two for one. That's not ideal, but the way a Lightning Bolt works is, um, or Rock Hydra works, is for every damage, you remove a head. So three damage means three heads are gone. And, oh, I'm forking my own lightning bolt. Look at this. Three lightning bolts and a fork later. And all the creatures on the side of Rickard are gone. Of course, he still has that Mishra's Factory. But this was a pretty good turn for me. Unfortunately, I had to tap the Psychic Venom land again. Look at that. I'm on eight. Even more damage dealt to me by that Psychic Venom. Just, just amazing. Tapping four here. There's an Icy Manipulator. Oh, no. He can use the Icy to tip... Tap the Psychic Venom Land, and of course he's going to attack with his Factory, because I'm tapped out, so I'm going to go to 6. He's going to tap my Psychic Venom Land. I'm going to use the mana for my book, but still, damage is dealt. I'm going to go to 2. Oh, things are looking really, really bad for me. I have to get rid, I have to find a Detonate here to get rid of the Icy Manipulator, and I have to find a Blocker. Okay, at least there's a Detonate, so that's an Icy Manipulator gone, and 4 damage for Rickard. Just the first damage that he's taken. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's on 16. Playing, oh, there it is, a Blood Moon. This is nah, not horrible news for Rickard because he's got the basic Swamp and basic Island. But at least I'm stopping his Mishra's Factory as well. So I'm now kind of on four. And the question is, will I be able to stabilize? Remember, I'm playing with lots of burn spells. So I've got tons of mana. Okay, going to one. I'm still alive. There is no problem here. Mana. <laughs> Oh, nice, Rickard. I really appreciate the way you're winning this uh, game number one with that mana short. Mana short number three 
And that Psychic Venom for me was the MVP of this game, hands down. Uh, Rickard, thank you, man. Already, we're, we're just in game one, but thank you already for bringing this deck to the table. It's so cool to see Psychic Venom shine, you know. I think that card really deserves the credits. Um, okay, so this was game one. We're going to dive into our sideboards. I'm predicting a lot of red elemental blast versus blue elemental blast stuff happening in game two. Maybe I can get the upper hand. I don't know. Let's hope. Um, let's go to, to game two and, and find out. Game number two. Okay, and I saw three mana shorts in that game. Hoping to see a little bit less maybe for game two. It's always cool to uh, have these uh, three game matches, but it's going to be tough. At least I'm on the play. Remember, I'm playing with the mono red, so I don't really have a solution for enchantment. So for me, Psychic Venom is something that's just there to stick. There's nothing I can do. Uh, I should be able to generate so much mana though, like in theory, that I don't really need uh, the land that the Psychic Venom is cast on, but you kind of saw that really backfire on me in game one. Also, mana short in a way should not work very well against me because of this card, Candelabra of Tannis. So if he plays mana short, I can pump all that mana into my Candelabra of Tannis and then use that to untap my lands again, I think. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that's how I can use it. So then mana short doesn't really work against me. Second mountain passing turn, again, no mana vault found. And kind of these, these, this game is already kind of showing me, okay, I cannot do that much in the first few turns. So maybe I need to look at that again when going back to the drawing board. Also, no turn three dragon engine. We haven't seen a single dragon engine. I mean, I'm going to play a dragon engine, right? I'm playing with three of those main board. Come on. Just passing turn here, playing mountain number four. Mana is definitely not an issue here. Showing my hand size, five cards in hand. Look at the mana base of Rickard. He's got there his underground seed. There is a mana short. And look at that. I'm actually not using my Candelabra of Tannis. I think I can do that. Let me know in the comments below if I'm right or I'm wrong. At least I'm not doing it. So I didn't realize it at the time. Uh, tapping four here. There is a Jam Day Tome. And there is another mountain, so I've got six lands, which is quite a lot. Ooh, this is pretty devastating for my opponent here. Blood Moon is a big problem for Rickard. Remember, all his non-basic lands are now mountains. Of course, he is playing with the color red, so it could have been worse for him. But it's far from ideal. Only having one blue mana left at his disposal, so it's going to make it impossible for him to counter, for example. Finding another mountain, and there is a dragon whelp, so hopefully I can put some pressure on. Let's hope he doesn't have a lightning bolt. And there's a lightning bolt. Okay, that's that. That's gone. And he's also drawing a card, so it's actually not too bad for Rickard. Kind of this standstill situation. He draws cards, extra cards. I don't, so it's, it's actually better for him, this scenario. There we go again, another Dragon Whelp. Because of the Blood Moon, I don't have to worry about counter magic. He's gonna fish, gonna try to find another Lightning Bolt probably. If not, I can finally deal some combat damage. I wasn't able to do that in um, game number one. Let's see. Tapping a blue one. Aye! Blue Elemental Blast. Okay, there's a red Elemental Blast to counter the blue Elemental Blast. And then you know we've entered sideboard territory. And of course, for me, playing a mono color, especially mono red or mono blue, you know you're going to have to deal with those blasts. Oh, there's an Icy Manipulator. And every time it seems that Rickard has that extra answer. So every time I think, oh, there's an opening, I can start dealing some damage. He comes with something to stop it. I've got tons and tons of land. No Sheevan Dragon. And passing turn here. And uh, let's hope that I can find a detonate. Then I have to choose what am I going to detonate, the book or the uh, the icy. I think in this case I would go for the icy. He already has card advantage. Ooh, there is a blue elemental blast on my blood moon. So he's back in business. Tapping four, control magic. 
Yeah, those control magics are pretty brutal because they don't have anything against enchantments. And remember, I believe he's playing three main board. Maybe he boarded one extra in from the side. I'm not sure if he had that extra control magic in the sideboard, though. Tapping 4-4. Four, four. No, changing my mind. Just passing turn here. Interesting. I wonder what I wanted to do there. I mean, it's looking pretty bad for me. Look at that. All I have is a single Candelabra of Tannis and tons of lands. I mean, this is not what I'm going for. When I was building this deck, this, <laughs> this, this was not my intention. Oh, I remember this. Now I'm reading Dragon Whelp. And you know what I, what I realized is um, when somebody control magics your Dragon Whelp, what you can do, you can actually pump tons of red mana into it so that it destroys itself. So this was definitely a mistake on my side. And now I have to play, okay, Fork Disintegrate, getting rid of both of his creatures, one of those being mine, by the way. Um, so when you're Rickard, it's not too bad. You're like, okay, well, you've just destroyed your own creature. And he wants to use the book with the four mana, but actually, because it's a Disintegrate, it's removed from the game. It doesn't go to the graveyard, so uh, Rickard doesn't get the four mana. And, uh, it's interesting because he's not placing it outside of his graveyard. Anyway, he's drawing an extra card now, but that was a huge mistake on my part. Uh, when Rickard stole the Dragon Whelp, I should have pumped it up, uh, over to three mark so that it killed itself. Didn't happen. And, oh, Dragon Engine. Okay. At least it's on the board. At least that's something. I feel, to be honest, I feel like I'm not doing this deck much, much justice. I need to play more with my Candle Flare deck. This needs more practice from my side. I think I'm giving it a back rap, bad rap. It's actually better than what you're seeing right now. But then again, it is true that you have little weapons against enchantments. Uh, let's take a look. What's Rickard going to do here? Tapping four. There is a Sushi again. Remember, he's got the Icy. So next turn, he can tap down my Dragon Engine and then he can roll over for four. And he still has that Jam Day Tome, you know? Tapping down my Dragon Engine. And passing turn here. And he's going to attack. So I'm going to go to 12. I mean, things are looking really bad. I mean, I think things were looking better for me in Game 1. And I lost Game 1. So <laughs> I don't really know what to do to get back from this. And yeah, of course, more mana. That's the answer. Only one card in hand. Just played a soul ring. I'm on 12. He's got double Suchi. He's going to tap down my dragon. He's going to attack with double Suchi. going to bring me to four. Maybe, and yeah, he's going to animate his factory as well. He's going to hit me for 10 here. Wow. This is, this is not looking great. As a matter of fact, I can boldly state that it's looking very bad for me right now. Is he going to win it already? I'm on two. There's Fireball. Fork in the Fireball. Good for me. Good for me. Fork in the Fireball. At least dealing some damage to Rickard here in game two. So, Rickard, you've won this. You've also won the match. But I've got good news for all the viewers. We did play game number three. And I can tell you, that was a pretty awesome game. This game two, really, really one-sided. Well done, Rickard. I thought game one was a blast. Game two, very one-sided. And now we're going to play game three. I can tell you game three, uh, it's an interesting one. So stick around. We're going to go to game number three. Game number three. And uh, yep, two games down. Fair enough. But we're going to do a third game. I'm on to play again. Maybe, maybe I can get my deck to shine. I do believe... It deserves some more airtime here. So we're just going to see Rickard. Also, your deck, man, looking really solid. Uh, I really, really like the Mana Shorts. I like Psychic Venom, so I'm looking forward. Well, not looking forward to see them in this in this game three, but <laughs> I appreciate it. Let me put it that way. Playing a basic mountain and passing turn. There's the Mishra's Factory and another mountain and passing again. Maybe it's nice to note that I believe both of us are playing with underpowered decks. And there's the attack and there's the lightning bolt. This is kind of, of course, what you hope to do is that your opponent will attack and that um, that you will kind of get the chance to take care of a creature and kind of get that extra land on the board. There's a mana flare. And that means that all the lands now produce an extra mana. So a Rickard now has two black to his disposal instead of one. And if he plays another land, which I expect he's going to do, there we go, he's got four mana. So he can actually cast Hypnotic Spectre. There's the hypnotic, okay, there's the hypnotic specter, or a Suchi, I wanted to say, but 
Ooh, that's kind of a problem. Hopefully I can just burn it away here. Okay, there's a Shivan. That's your answer. Shivan, turn number four. And I'm crossing my fingers here, hoping that Rickard has no answer to the Shivan Dragon. Remember, um, if he can, for example, find an Icy Manipulator now, he can tap it down and then attack letting me discard. That would mean that he's taking a lot of damage next turn, but hey, it's a solution. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping a City of Brass, taking a damage here. Tapping six in total. Will we see a big fireball? Okay, it looks like he's changing his mind. And yeah, there we see a big fireball on the Sheevan Dragon. So that's bad news for me. Does mean a damage at least for Ricker going to 19. But yeah, there you go. Cards are there. He can attack me now. Going to go down to, uh, to 18. Losing a Dragon Engine. Oh, man, sometimes you have these games where it's just not going your way, and maybe I should just accept it. Okay, okay, there's a Lightning Bolt, at least. And a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, that's pretty cool. Shatter came in from the sideboard. Oh, look at that. Is she losing a Mana Short and that Counterspell. Really happy to see that Counterspell go, and maybe I can find something here. Tapping two, casting a Dragon Whelp. And passing turn. Okay, so at least the Wheel of Fortune kind of came on the right time. Now, of course, the problem is with that Mana Flare, my opponent now has six mana and is probably going to play another land. That means he's got eight mana to do all sorts of scary stuff. So I'm not really feeling confident right now. There is a Island tapping two, Soul Ring having one blue floating. So he's got five mana now, two black, blue, two colors. Ooh, even tapping more. Going down to 18, double Suchi. That's bad, but it could have been a lot worse. So I'm actually not too unhappy with this. Wonder if I boarded in a Shatterstorm. Do I actually have that sideboard? I don't know. Going through my cards. I do believe I play one Shatterstorm sideboard. Oh, I'm going to blow up my Dragon Whelp here. Look at that. So I'm pumping 8 mana into my Dragon Whelp, so it's now a 10-3, and remember my opponent is tapped out, so I'm now going to deal 10 damage with one Dragon Whelp, and this is actually what the deck wants to do, you know, really just deal a ton of damage with one or two swings. So he's now on 8, and I'm keeping one Mountain untapped, I wonder what my plan is, maybe just, maybe just simply boring burn, maybe I'm just going to burn him to death next turn, wouldn't be surprised. Then again, you know, I mean, Rickard is playing with five counter spells. I mean, one is in the bin, it means he still has two. He's going to swing in for ten, so I'm on eight. It's eight, eight at the moment. You actually could have used the other factory to... Oh, there's a red elemental blast. There's a blue elemental blast. There's a red elemental blast. Wow. And now I don't have enough mana anymore to kill him. I do need a land and a burn spell. Okay, now if I have a burn spell, look at that, burning him here. Okay, burning him for seven, precisely for seven. That's the way I win it. Okay. Okay, okay, I have to say, I think game one really was the game for me in this matchup. I really like the match because I think both of these decks, especially the deck of Rickert, you don't see that often. So I really enjoyed um, looking at playing against a deck with Mana Short. Thank you for bringing that to the table. And I also would like to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Now, um, if you'd like to help me out, you know, if you'd like to help me grow the channel, you can do that by leaving a like, leaving a comment, sharing this on your socials, and subscribing if you're not a sub yet. All that is free and it's really appreciated. Another thing you can do is not using an ad blocker so that I can get a little bit of income out of these videos. Talking about income, you can also become a sponsor of the show by becoming a patron. Rickard is also a patron and uh, you can do that by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there you can find out what you're gonna get when you're supporting the channel, when you're becoming a sponsor of the channel. It already starts at one dollar a month talking about sponsorships let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing fantastic channel members and patrons of timmy talks
Petrus, thank you to Somba Kazi.